In today's tutorial, let's do the light-up cowl a divadan design. And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do a light-up cowl and this is using Bernat Roving Yarn and you can also use uh, Peyton's uh, Classic Wool Roving as well. You can choose one of the two. They are both different yarns but they're very similar in look. You're going to need an 8 millimeter size uh, um, L crochet hook today and what we're going to be doing is adding lights into it. So let me just show up a photograph of what it looks like with the lights all on. Yes, it looks fabulous. So what we're going to do is that we're going to make this cowl and we're going to put the lighting in as we go and there's not too many revolutions, only eight and we're going to be doing this as we go. We're then going to be making a pocket that fits the battery pack and then once we get that done it's good to go. So without further ado, let's grab your yarn and a hook and let's get going. So in today's pattern you're going to need a set of LED lights and these are just little Christmas ornaments. They come with the battery pack and when you use them they're just a wire just like so. So what we want to do is that I pick those up at Michael's uh, stores. You can just look at any craft store. Maybe even a dollar store might have them. You never know. And what they are is little wires that you're going to be crocheting around. So before you do anything with this project you should test them and put your batteries in and test to make sure that they will light up on you. If they don't light up then you're obviously not going to use it. This is a one time use in the sense that once it's in your project it's in there for good. So you want to make sure that they are working before you begin. So here's Diva Dan's cowl and what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be starting off in the base area over here and then what we're going to do is work our way up. So you can see that there's a bit of treble work and it's actually pretty good. So I removed the lights out of this so I could recycle it for teaching you how to do it. So I just slid the lights out. This is not something that you want to do. You kind of want to put your lights in permanently. Um, I just had to take extra precaution and pull those out. So let's, this is what we're aiming for today and we're going to be putting the lights in right where you see the taupe colors right here and I'm just going to be using different color yarn today. So let's create a slip knot and let's begin and I need you to do a total chain of 60. Okay, so let's just put this on the hook, a size 8 millimeter size L crochet hook and you're going to do 60. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and go all the way to 60 for me. So I have my 60 in and what I want to do is make sure this chain is not twisted in any way and I just want to make sure it's not twisted and therefore it'll look great on the outside. So just kind of opening it up and making sure that it all looks the same. Okay, once you're satisfied with that you're just going to insert your hook into the beginning chain and what I want you to do is that I want you to just yarn over and pull through and through and that will make a form or that will form a ring just like this. So here is your cowl just like that. So let's carry on for row number one. So row number one or round number one we're going to chain up three and that counts as a double crochet and what we're going to do is just move along and each stitch here is going to get one double crochet. So wrap that hook first and each stitch is going to get a double crochet all the way around. So please do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So then coming up all the way around I want to make sure that this cowl is not doing any weird twists. So think about it like a fan belt of a car and that when you lay it out that there's no weird twisting to it. Okay, so just make sure, just follow the top, make sure that it follows all the way back around on the top side and then I want you to attach to the top of the beginning chain three that you started with and we're gonna fasten off this yarn. So we're gonna get rid of it completely. Some people like to change yarns before they fasten off. I like to fasten off completely to have a nice clean line and in Daniel's design you're gonna wanna do that. So you're just gonna wanna weave in your ends in and out. You can put it in a darning needle if you wish as well. It's up to you. And uh, this uh, particular one I think that you can weave in and out without any problems because the top of this one is gonna become buried in the next revolution. So just get rid of that and then we're gonna get another color out and it's gonna be orange for me and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that. So in the next revolution we're gonna use orange but I need you to get your lights ready and I need you to get your battery pack, make sure that it's good to go, that everything's working and I need you to get to a position that is right before a bulb starts right there. And what we're gonna do is that we're going to uh, fix this lighting in as we go in this revolution. So let's just put this down here and keep the lights close to me and create a slip knot and let's begin the very first one. So this one here is working in the front post. So just uh, going and where you started just wrap around the front post. So coming in through the side and we're gonna do front post double crochet. Okay and I can use a darning needle to get rid of that straggler at the end. 
Okay, so I just attached it with the slip stitch and chain three. So one, two, and three. So I want you to put the battery pack inside the center of this so it stays in there. Okay, and I want you then to now come around and we're gonna start then getting the lighting into position. Getting it done for the first time uh, like the first few is kind of a pain but once you get it, it works out really well. So what you're gonna do is that you're gonna wrap the hook and you're gonna go in the front post and you're gonna go around this wire. Okay, so you're just going right around the wire and trap that wire into position like this. So this is just before the first bulb starts on the wire. Now if you do the next one, see how it's lined up over the next post? If you do the next one, this bulb will be underneath. So what you wanna do in the next post, you just wanna go around the post but leave the wire on the outside. Just like that. And then going into your next one, see your next post and go around the post and trap that wire into position. Okay, do you see that? So by doing this, what's happening is that you're leaving space for that bulb to be exposed. So when you go to turn on the bulb, that you will be able to see the lights just like that. See? Isn't that cool? So what you wanna do is continue to go around the front post and trapping that wire in as you go. Don't kink that wire. If you kink that wire, you could break the, the power transition that it does for each bulb. And what you're just doing is letting that stay on the inside. Now because you're doing it this way, you don't see any wire in the back, so it's not gonna be an up against your skin on the back side. So continuing to go around the wire as you go. And we're about to hit another bulb soon and I will stick with you until you get there. So when you get the first uh, few inches in, you just wanna make sure that that bulb is not, see, I don't see the bulb here, so just make sure you pull it, make sure it's sitting properly and therefore you won't accidentally um, misalign yourself as you go forward. The more that you trap it in, the more that's not gonna move anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna come into the next one. The bulb is still right where I want it to be here and the bulb is not ready to be uh, skipped over until the next one. Okay, so I look in, I can see that the bulb is here and the next bulb is about to appear here. Okay, so it's right over this post. So just go around this post, leaving the wire out. And then continue then with the next one and trap the wire back into position so that you can get it. So you'll notice that the bulb appears like it's uh, facing the wrong direction at this time. So just gently, of course, just gently just coming in and just kind of bending it so that it goes forward just like that. Okay, so you can see that it's buried under this one, it's in front of this one and it's buried back again. So what I want you to do is that I want you to continue around burying this, this lighting as you go and I want you just to continue to go until you are satisfied. So continue all the way around and we're gonna drop the lighting out of the way then but we're gonna keep it with our project and uh, we're gonna uh, revisit the lighting further on in this project. So I'll see you when you get all the way back around. Okay, so I'm coming up all the way back to the, the beginning where I was and I've done my last post here. So what I want to do with the remaining of this wire is that I want to place it to the inside of this cowl. So just grabbing it here. I just turned it on to make sure it's still working. And what I want to do is just put it to the inside of the cowl here and I will refer to it again later on. So we're gonna carry it up and do another revolution somewhere else. And what I want to do is just carry it up. So I'm just putting it on the inside of the cowl so that the last one then comes on the inside here. Okay, so when I go to seal the deal and go to attach it to the beginning chain three that it's already on the inside waiting for me next time. So what I want to do is just join it with a slip stitch and then I want to fasten off this yarn. Just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna fasten off this yarn and then I'm gonna bring back this blue color here and I'm gonna use a darning needle to get rid of that. Okay, with the wires on the inside of this now, they should be coming out through the inside of this cowl and only the wires on the outside should have the bulbs. So if you tested it, they should be turning on on the outside just like you see here. So let's uh, now continue. We're gonna bring back our blue color here. So we're gonna bring back our color here and we're just gonna go right to the top and we're going to put the color back on. We're just gonna slip stitch it to fasten on and we're gonna chain four. So let's just slip it first so it slips. So now let's chain four that counts as a treble. So one, two, 
three and four and now into each stitch all the way around I want you to treble. So wrap that hook twice and then into each stitch. Don't worry about the wire just let it be where it is. We're gonna pick it up again at a later time and so you're just gonna treble into each one going all the way around. So please do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm just coming up all the way around to where I had started and I again I'm leaving the wire alone. I don't wanna touch it. I just wanna make sure I get everything in that I wanna get in and I'm going to continue up one more revolution of doing trebles like so. So we're just uh, we only use the, the wire once in a while. If we use it too often then you're gonna run out of bulbs. So just join it to the top of the chain four. and then we're gonna continue again. So we're gonna do another revolution again ignoring the wires and just continuing again. So we're gonna chain up four that counts as a treble and then continuing along. So wrap twice and then going once into every stitch. So please do that again for one more revolution. So I'm coming into my last one, the last treble and I'm keeping this yarn on one more time as we go around and this time we want to do a double crochet and what we're doing is we're setting up the foundation for bringing back orange once again. So to start the double crochet we're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet and then you're just gonna move along and each stitch around will be a double crochet. So please do that. Ignore the wire still and we'll be back in just a moment. So this coming up all the way back around just double crocheting one into each one and then I'm just gonna join it to the top of the first chain three. That's it. So we're gonna fasten off this color completely. Get rid of it and you can weave it in. We're gonna bring back the orange one last time and we're just gonna weave in the ends here as it was. We're also going to bring back our wire. So our wire is gonna come back up around. It's been currently just sitting it down in the middle here and I want to bring it back up for the next revolution. So I'm just weaving in my ends here and I want to reach in. I'm gonna trim that down. Make sure you don't trim your lights <laughs> okay, so what I wanna do is just reach in and I wanna grab the remaining lights back out of the middle. Okay, so you don't wanna go up on the outside because then you'll see it carrying across and right where I left it is down here in the middle. Okay, so this is where it's going up here. Okay, so I want to just make sure that I'm carrying it across. Make sure this doesn't get in the way here. So I wanna make sure anything is untangled because once you start pushing this into position it's gonna be permanent. So what I wanna do is when I have this pop out I wanna make sure that there's no extra tension so it doesn't compress like this. So I wanna make sure it's all good and you may have a light that actually is showing so I wanna make sure that everything is positioned before you kinda do that and then bring it back up like this. So let's grab our remaining yarn. So you may have a light that goes in between. No big deal it happens. It's uh, not a deal breaker. So what I wanna do is grab my yarn and we're gonna do front post double crochets again. So just straight up. Okay and I want to go into the first one. Just attach it and I'll get rid of the, the tail with the darning needle later. So I'm going to then just chain three. So one and two and three. So what I want to do is grabbing this uh, wire again is that I can see that there's a bulb right there. So just making sure I'm getting everything. I'm just gonna pull this wire back out in front of me. Okay and so the first one I'm gonna go around like this. So I'm just gonna grab the first one and just go around it but I'm not actually gonna go around the wire. I'm just gonna leave that there so it pops out. See because there's a bulb and now the next one I'm gonna go around the wire. Okay so we just kind of secured that into position and then once you do that I'm just gonna kind of just position as you go. So just continuing to go around on front post double crochet making sure you get that wire stuck in there as you go and then it can be buried. So remember that's what I kind of showed you before just learning how to bury your wires and then leaving the space there when a bulb appears which is coming up really soon. So the whole idea is that I'm not forcing the wire to really take its shape. I'm just kind of letting it show up where it's gonna. So if you want to um, just kind of bend things if you have to in order to make the bulbs pop out where you want them to, uh, it's completely up to you. It's your creativity. It's your choice. So the bulb would be next then for me. See how it's over the next one. So the next one I'm just gonna leave the wire out 
and then the one after that I'll put the wire back in. So just continue to go around like that. Oops, make sure I get the wire. Make sure you uh, just continue to go around like that and just position as you go. See, so then it appears on the outside. So if I test it, see, it's on the outside. So continue to do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I'm just following the procedures like I showed you. And the very last one here, I wanna bring the wire back to the inside. So before I, I fasten on, you see I have a little bit left. I have one, two, three, four more bulbs left here on the strand but I've all out of stitches on the outside. So I'm gonna let that fall to the inside and I'm gonna slip stitch it to the top of the beginning chain three that we had started with. So we're gonna fasten off this yarn and we're gonna bring back the blue yarn for two more revolutions and then this is done. So what I wanna do is just use a darning needle and I'm going to fasten that off here. And I'm gonna do that now before I continue. For a darning needle, all I just have to do is just uh, put the yarn onto the needle. It compresses nicely. It's a great little yarn and I'm just gonna weave it in and out of the edges just right underneath the stitches and I'm gonna go just twice. So just one and just back in the other direction for two. Just through a different set of fibers. So then that one's out. So I'm not impeding on the wire at all. Make sure you don't cut the wire when you're trimming your edges or trimming your tails. And then this is the one that I started with and I did this before um, I just did it off camera. So I'm just gonna go up um, into the needle and then up through the work. So I'm just gonna go up through the, the post here. And then therefore it looks like it matches. And then I'm just gonna go through a few stitches on the top. So just right underneath, don't try to get that top piece because then it will look like it's there. Okay, and so then that is out of the way. So let's carry on with using blue next. So I'm bringing back my blue and just gonna start with the slip knot again and coming in the top of the stitch and I'm going to just start and I'm gonna chain three which counts as a double crochet. So one, sorry, sorry, one, two and three and I'm just gonna work my way across the, st the stitches. So I'm not bothering with the Y, just let it go where it is and we're gonna deal with that later on in this tutorial. So the wire work is pretty much done for this project and I'm just gonna do two revolutions of this blue just to finalize this side off. So just go around and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm just coming up all the way around. I'm still double crocheting and then I just join to the top of the chain three. I want you to go one more round. So chain up one and then one single crochet into each of the stitches all the way around and then when we come back I'll fasten off and then that's it for doing the cowl as far as stitch work for the outside. We're going to then crochet ourselves a pocket where the battery pack will fit inside. So I'm coming up to my last one and that's it for this and I'm gonna slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. So I'm just gonna fasten off now and I'm going to use a darning needle to hide in the last remaining end and then we're gonna start working on the pocket and the pocket's really quite easy to do. And what we want to do is that with the battery pack and the additional wires that we had left over are gonna go inside the pocket and you wanna position that pocket into the back of the, of the cowl right where I am right now where we've been doing all the slip stitching and etc. It was right at the back. So I'm just uh, hiding in this loose uh, last end here. If you go in and out three times you can completely hide it without anybody noticing it's there. So let's uh, continue along and let's show you how to do the battery pack pouch. So at this time you now have your wires in and you can see that it's starting to glow and it's awesome. So it does a great job and the wires on the inside have not, you can't see them here. They're all buried here except for the last remaining wire and the battery pack. So what we need to do is that we need to position a pocket that will go into the back of the cowl that is positioned behind your neck so that it's not obvious. So here's the front of the cowl here and once you've done it you can just uh, reposition all of these little lights as well because if they might have uh, moved around as you were working on it. So you just, you can just uh, pry and poke at it and just pull things out if you want to. So we need to make a battery pack for this. So let's show you how to do that and you can use either orange or blue or a different color. It's up to, it's completely up to you. So using the blue I'm going to create a, a slip knot and I want you to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, 
and six. So this is gonna be the center point of the bottom of the pocket. So going second chain from the hook, I want you to do one single crochet into that one plus all the rest of them except for the very last one where I'm gonna ask you to put three into the final one. Watch what I'm gonna do here is that I'm making the very bottom of the pouch or it's like a bag. So the next one is the last stitch here. So you're gonna put in three single crochets there. So watch how I'm turning the project. So one, I'm just naturally turning it because it'll happen, two and three. So now I've completely turned that chain upside down and I'm gonna work across the other side of that chain. Now I'm just single crochet and then the last one of this chain of this side is that I'm gonna apply um, two single crochets. So this is creating the bottom of the base of the pocket. So the next one is the last one and I'm gonna place two more single crochets there. But I don't want you to join it. I want you to just leave it as is and now just going right to the next one I want you to continue to single crochet yourself all the way around. So just going into the next one here you just want a single crochet. So you're just gonna go into continuous revolution. This pocket will not be uh, visible from the, the um, per, uh, like your friend's point of view. So you can just, uh, just go around in a continuous circle. You don't gotta worry about any slip stitching to make it perfect in the sense of look. You just wanna go continuously around. Now because you did six it's gonna be opening up for you and just continue to do that. So what you wanna do is when you're doing this you wanna make sure that the battery pack can still uh, poke out of the top. Chances are your battery pack will have the on and off switch at the top of the pack. So you don't wanna bury it into a pocket that's so deep that you have to pull it out of the pocket in order to turn it on and off. But you don't want it being that shallow too that it will fall out as you're wearing it. So it's that uh, catch 22. So I'm just gonna continue to circle this thing until I get to the depth that I want. And when I look at it from this point of view, see, I just wanna make sure I get to the right depth when I go to do it. Okay, so that's what I'm using to measure. I'm probably gonna go up close to the top of this energizer thing before fastening off. So I'll leave that for you. One single crochet into each all the way around and around to get to the height that you need. So now I got a pocket that I can use here and if you test it, it should work. So your battery pack should be able to fit inside this pocket just like so. And if it's a little snug, that's okay too. But you don't want it too loose that so it's gonna be flopping all over the place. So it's kind of buried in there. So that's what it will look like when it's in position. So now we have to attach this to where this is in the back. So we wanna look where the slip stitching has been and I want to attach this in an area where it can be well hidden. So if I go up too high, it's gonna pull down your cowl and if I go too low then it's gonna be falling out below the cowl. So what I wanna do is that I wanna attach to the first area right here. These are the single, uh, the double crochets and then you did the orange and you did uh, front post if you remember. So I wanna come right into the back and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go into one of the double crochets here in the blue and I wanna go back to the pocket and I wanna single crochet. And then I'm gonna go to the next double crochet on the cowl and the next pocket, or uh, next piece of the pocket and keep doing that. Just like that. And I'm only, obviously I'm not gonna go all the way around the pocket cause then you'll get it, uh, because then you'll close it off. So you wanna just go long enough that it will sit inside here and you will not see this pocket from the outside. So I'm satisfied with that now and now I can just trim off my edges here. So I'm gonna trim and I can use a darning needle to get rid of that, that tail at the end. So let's get the tail in. So the trick is now is that we use this pocket to our advantage to keep this battery pack in position as you're wearing it and behind your neck area. And because you're using nice yarn and etc. here it's going to look great here. So just getting this tail out of the way. You might as well take your time and get this final tail out especially if you're gonna give it as a gift. You never know people are probably gonna ask you to take it off and look at it. So what I want you to do is that I want you to put your battery pack in to the pocket and before you do anything else I want you to grab the wires that are remaining outside of this. Okay, so just kind of tuck it into the remaining of the pocket. Any strands that you left, we, we were left with which is here. I'm just gonna roll nicely. Do not kink it because you don't wanna break that this, those uh, wires at all and I wanna tuck those. So I'm tucking it onto the inside of 
the pocket here. So now the wires are not gonna be out of the way and so when you're wearing it, it's going to look fabulous. Okay, so now you can turn it on here and all you just gotta do is now shape it and make sure all the bulbs are now coming out of the project and now you have two layers here and you have a pocket that's on the inside of your work so that nobody will ever see it and uh, it'll be pretty awesome at the same time. So until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. This is how you do a light up cowl and I hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial. Till next time, have a great day.